My name is Dmitri. This is my wife, Valeria. And we're... Hi. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. Uh, and, you know, we are a tech entrepreneurs. We are founders of an uh, online educational platform for project and program managers. It's called PM Club. We provide courses on ITIL, Prince2, PMP, other management stuff. And it is not advertisement, and it is a very important point in the context of our presentation. Look, we are not accountants. We are not legal advisors. We are not lawyers, and we are not even Turkish. So today, we are going to share our experience in setting a company in Turkey. But it is only our experience, and you don't have to take it on trust. And this is actually the first lesson we want to share. Guys, take full responsibility for your actions. Because you can read all the Telegram chats, right? Ask questions there. Probably you have those chats, right, in your Telegram. And uh, you can find some local friends or knowledgeable friends from your country. But in the end of the day, it's you who makes the call. And in the end of the day, it's you who pays the taxes, pays the bills, and uh, solves the problems. So take responsibility. Back to our story. We came to Turkey about a year ago, way before the war. And we came to Antalya. Have you been there? Anybody from Antalya here? Congratulations, mate. Congratulations. We'll talk to you after the presentation. So Antalya is an amazing place. Antalya is so chill. Weather is nice. Climate is nice. People are very warm, actually. Turkish people are really warm and supportive. I love it. And we moved to Antalya as digital nomads, kept doing our business as usual. Uh, our major market was Eastern Europe. We had some projects to sell internationally, but well, it was not the bigger part of our revenue. And unfortunately, well, you know what happened, right? The war started. Our neighbor is from Kharkiv. Uh, our coach is from Kherson. We have friends from other Ukrainian cities, and I can't really imagine what they feel. So, honestly, I can't really complain. But still, though we are in Antalya and we are safe, uh, on that day we realized that we do not have Turkish bank cards because our cards worked perfectly well. Our business uh, is not international yet. We do not have uh, any Turkish entity. So, you know, we are kind of screwed, right? Future is too uncertain. Yep, yep, we're all here on the same page. So guys, here is the second lesson. If you have something on your mind, like starting a new company here, opening a bank account, again to the topic, starting a company here, do not hesitate, do not wait, because you never know when the situation goes south, right? So don't hesitate, start acting. How did we open the company? Uh, first, we asked our Russian-speaking friend because uh, she uh, launched the company there way uh, before everything. And uh, she was complaining uh, about uh, the co-founder and about the accountants. And uh, OK, so we decided that we will not follow her lead and will not ask uh, her accountant uh, to take our company. So we asked another friend, local one, uh, to um, um, uh, give us uh, contacts of his accountant. Uh, and uh, as uh, all of his previous uh, tips uh, and help was really valuable, we uh, decided uh, to work with his accountant. Uh, so, um, but. The problem just begins here because uh, um, accountants, uh, especially in Antalya, they uh, don't really uh, speak uh, English uh, confidently uh, to um, make business with you. So we had to ask uh, for a translator. Okay, we got a translator and uh, we set up a meeting. 
Um, and uh, we also prepared the list of uh, questions we had for the accountant. Uh, and uh, when we came and started asking questions about companies, types, and, and stuff, um, the accountant gave really a lot of information. But the translator uh, translated it uh, like in two sentences. Uh, so uh, you just listen to the accountant for several minutes, and then she uh, gives just two sentences. Uh, so, you know, we were kind of uh, confused. Uh, so like our uh, tip for you, uh, uh, translators can be different and uh, some of them um, really um, don't uh, also speak confident Russian. So it's uh, easier to find uh, a Russian speaking first uh, translator. Uh, and um, so some of them have their areas of uh, expertise, uh, so be aware of it when you're looking for a translator. Um, not all of them can handle the situation. Okay, so we decided uh, that we are going to open the limited liability company uh, and prepare just documents. Uh, this was the list, <laughs> you see, <laughs> a very long uh, list of our documents. Uh, so it's basically uh, the translation of, uh, of our passport into Turkish. Uh, you translate it, you go to notary or you have um, this prepared. Then um, the contract of the rent. We rented the uh, um, flat and we decided to uh, use it as uh, an office. I'm not sure our hosts know about it, but okay. Uh, two photos, this was easy. And also text numbers you get uh, to just uh, in the internet. And also we paid 50% uh, for the service. It was, uh, uh, the whole service was uh, around uh, 1000 euros. Um, then we signed uh, documents in the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, and um, after several um, days, we went to notary to uh, verify the documents. Sounds very easy. Um, then, when you uh, organized all this stuff, you uh, get inspection. So the text. Uh, inspector comes to your office uh, and just uh, looks through some documents. Uh, but um, it's just lucky that we were at home when he uh, rang because uh, we didn't ex uh, we expect him, expected him, right? But we didn't know that it will be so fast. And we are just lucky that we answered the phone because I just uh, went out for, uh, from the shower uh, and I didn't even dry my hair, and I was like, what, Dex, uh, no? <laughs> and uh, I didn't uh, understand what he was um, uh, talking about uh, via phone, because, uh, uh, okay, I, I tried to learn Turkish, but it's not, you know, uh, advanced enough. Uh, and uh, he was like, uh, address, address, and started um, um, telling some words uh, from my address. So I realized that, okay, his guy, he knows what he's doing. So probably he really needs to find me. Your <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and I was like, okay, okay. So I, I repeated my address and uh, finally he came. And uh, he uh, didn't speak uh, any English. Uh, okay, so what did you do? We uh, offered tea, some chocolate. So he was uh, drinking tea, just looking through our documents. Also, he showed his online shop. So uh, we uh, kind of managed to, you know, made a small talk. Uh, so everything went smoothly. And finally, we uh, got the company registered. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So basically, uh, to pass uh, this way, uh, you need to follow this uh, tip. Just be nice to people. Wherever you can help somebody or advise something and uh, offer something, uh, just uh, try to be, you know, humans and uh, uh, show your empathy uh, and be uh, grateful when people help you. Uh, Turkish people are really, you know, uh, open and very welcoming and warming. Thank you so much. Thank you, Turkish people. <laughs>
И... Um, well, sounds very, very, very positive, and it is, but several points. Uh, our um, uh, company in Russia, uh, like, our school was called PM Club. So here in Turkey, we uh, didn't want to uh, invent something else and uh, also gave uh, the name of our company as PM Club to our accountant. Uh, what uh, happened to our name? Now it is like this. Um, I'm not sure. Thank you. Please send me the recording so I could, you know, play it and, and learn it. Uh, another, uh, let's say, surprise. Uh, this was uh, the registered uh, capital. Uh, we, uh, we, we need uh, to register a company, right? Because this is a, a limited liability company. Uh, well, just a moment. Uh, and when we came to the Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry and uh, checked the documents, the registered capital was? Uh, you couldn't imagine uh, our faces uh, because uh, uh, exchange rate uh, at, uh, uh, in those days, you know, were a, a little bit different. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, uh, but our accountant, uh, he just said that uh, they didn't uh, allow uh, to register a company with uh, less capital. OK. Um, also, in uh, Russia, our, our company was doing like consulting services, formally, uh, we mean. Uh, and here, so guys, now we are kind of in IT. <laughs> Um, and here comes uh, our uh, follow the following um, tip: be ready for surprises. You can't control everything. Talking about surprises, guys, I have a question for all of you. How do you think? Is it easy to open a bank account for a company in Turkey for a foreigner? Please, ladies, on the second floor. No. Okay. Yep. I say hand. Definitely no. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, guys. Honestly, all of you are right. Because technically we are a Turkish company, that's true. Uh, though the beneficiaries are not Turkish. Oops, also true. So, uh, probably you have been into this situation. You are just a student. You are 20 years old, you want to enter a Porsche club and there are security guys outside and they say, I'm sorry, the club is full today, maybe tomorrow. So that's what happened in nearly every bank office we entered. We enter, they check our documents, they ask where we are from and you know, they don't care about which country we are from exactly. We're somewhere from Eastern Europe. Sorry, guys, not today. So we decided, you know, uh, we care about our well-being. So we decided we can't get refused more than two times a day. So every day we tried two banks. Uh, and then we made a smart move. Well, this was about the last advice, right? Uh, be ready for surprises. And here comes another one. You see, they all work together. Uh, be nice with people. So we called our Turkish friend, said, Allah, Allah. And uh, he decided to go with us to the office. And uh, he came with us and he explained uh, what's going on. And they just opened an account for us. So yeah, that was easy. Uh, the thing is, Turkish people are really supportive, but take their perspective. You're an office, uh, you're a bank officer. You're doing your regular job from Monday to Friday, it's rather boring. And then all of a sudden, from nowhere, several thousand people uh, appear, they don't speak Turkish, they want to open their companies, IT, digital. What's going on, guys? They don't know what to do. So 
they really need someone to help them understand that you are not scam, that uh, you really want to pay taxes in Turkey, you really want to start a business in Turkey, you are legal, you are nice. That's it. So uh, the advice here is the main advice probably today. Don't give up. If you meet any obstacles, just think over it. Think about your friends who can help you. Be ready for surprises and don't give up and everything's gonna be fine. That's not the end, guys. Yeah, this was the last tip. And so now, six months later, yeah, we opened a company in March. And now, 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 what happens now? Well, actually, we're still exploring. Um, now uh, I... Uh, communicate with our accountant uh, via WhatsApp, and I receive uh, monthly uh, like messages uh, with some taxes and stuff. I don't really understand what I pay for, but uh, I, you know, acceptance. So basically, it works. Yes, 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 it works. Uh, we uh, still don't know all the consequences, but you can, you know, Join our uh, Telegram and uh, follow the story and see how it ends. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, guys. Guys, your questions? If you have, don't hesitate to... Yep, yep. Hi, I'm um, um, another non-IT person here. Um, I'm asking all the questions. Um, so, the, um, the 150,000 liras the basic capital of your company, did you have to have the money? <laughs> uh, you need to do it within uh, two years. So we have two years and now we kind of, you know, preparing ourselves. In the exchange, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and the second question, as an LLC uh, company, how much taxes do you pay? Because I was uh, trying to understand that when I was still freelancing. And I wanted to pay my taxes in Turkey as a freelancer here. And it was like very complicated. Um, it's not the wrong feeling, you are right. Uh, so basically... I'm, so, I'm just not smart enough, I think. <laughs> uh, nobody is. <laughs> well, it's just uh, everything really complicated. Basically, it's 23% uh, of your income. You should pay taxes. Uh, also, there is a tax uh, added value. Uh, tax. Te yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, VAT. Uh, yes, uh, so we, uh, but you can uh, also uh, reduce the amount you pay by uh, ac counting your expenses. Uh, so we don't, uh, we can't really say, you know, the exact uh, number or percent how much we pay. And you don't have to pay VAT. If you don't have to pay VAT if you are selling to European Union, for example, so VAT is about uh, Turkey. So yeah, it's uh, a lot, but uh, it, it's not as bad as it seems. Twenty-three. Yeah, but you reduce it uh, with your expenses. I have a question here. If you are uh, running your own company, do you have to register yourself under this social security stuff, or it's it's a reminder of thing. Uh, we respect uh, local legislation. I'm asking, is it coming <laughs> happening? You got it, yeah? Uh, we pay something for insurance, yes. We know it's not like the health insurance or this kind of thing. So basically, when I work for a Turkish company, now currently, the, the company, they are being the, let's say, they are paying some, some amount of money to, let's say, secure, uh, it's, it's, it's like social security. Mm -hmm. Let's say after 10, 15, 30 years, you're going to retire, they, they, they will have some security uh, stuff for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking about that. When you, you run your own job, you, you run your own business, do you yeah. have to do that? Uh, now, uh, okay, now, like legally, we don't work in our company. So we're, we're not workers. We just, you know, founders. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but if we are going to work, in that company and uh, make work permit and stuff, of course, we'll have to pay everything. Yeah. And another question, 
what kind of benefits for residency you will get if you have your phone company here as you did in your way? I mean, like being as an investor or whatever, I mean, like. Well, you, uh, <laughs> you can, um, get some benefits. Uh, I mean, if you have really big company, you can even apply for citizenship, I guess, but you know, we're really family business. More business. Can you get residency based on that? No, no, no. Uh, technically you can, uh, hire locals and then you can hire yourself and get a work permit and yeah, and that's a different type of uh, residency. So that's one of the ways, yeah. But uh, if you just uh, start a company and you do not work there, you're just shareholder, then yeah, no benefits. Please, sorry for the monthlets. I mean, uh, so in your case, if you open a company, so is it okay if you don't have any employees? I mean, or for your app, like the accountant, is that? No, 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 he's not an employee. Not an employee. Yep, just outsource. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second floor. Yeah, I see your hand. Hi, I just wanted to ask a, a follow-up question. So how do you get a residence permit here? We are tourists. <laughs> After so, it's, all. <laughs> so it's like six months plus six months. Um, you extend it forever. Well, uh, we came uh, one year ago, so we applied for one year and we got it for one year. And last month we applied for two months. And uh, we still uh, haven't received uh, the final decision. Yeah, uh, we uh, applied for two years, so we hope we'll get it, but we are not sure. So we'll see. Good luck with that. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I have a question about uh, 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 taking the money uh, from your clients. Do you have uh, any uh, issues uh, with it? <laughs> because, uh, well done. Yeah, no, that's well done. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Let's tell the story. Okay, look, we are creating and selling online courses, and uh, half of our revenue comes from companies, and the other for people just like you and me who are buying courses from our website. So, we definitely need a payment system. Back in the old country, we never had a PayPal. So we hope that here we'll start a new life and have a PayPal. Bad luck, guys. <laughs> PayPal doesn't work in Turkey and Stripe doesn't work in Turkey. And, uh, well, to make a story a bit longer, uh, we our courses, uh, we use uh, a learn management system called GetCourse and it has integrations with several payment system like global payment system because it's a global LMS. Oh, sorry. Okay, Tilde. Tilde also has several integrations. They, we needed the one that has both. And uh, Tilde, you know, Tilde.cc, the website constructor, yeah. They have integrations with uh, different payment systems. Uh, so we had like uh, two limitations. Uh, the payment system had to work with Tilde and uh, the payment system had uh, to work in Turkey. So in the end, our list uh, reduced to one payment system. Yep. So <laughs> we didn't have uh, uh, to suffer because of, whoa, which choice should we make? Which is the right choice? Uh, so we just uh, applied uh, for this payment system and uh, it was a regular process. And uh, now we have it installed. Uh, the difference is that uh, we have to send uh, an invoice uh, manually after each purchase. Uh, so far, we have no idea how to automate it. Uh, we use uh, some Turkish uh, system, like official state system, to send these uh, invoices. So yeah, it's some more manual work to do. We can. Uh, um, and oh, one well, one of the most popular systems here is uh, EasyCo. So if you haven't checked it, just check it. Uh, and uh, it probably can make this uh, automatic um, um, invoices for your customers. Um, but tell, shall we tell the funniest thing? Yep. Okay, so we finally installed Don't laugh too loud. our pay the payment system, the payment gateway on our website. 
but then it turned out uh, that uh, it accepts cards, you know, by PayPal. So weird, yeah? we kind of can't uh, accept money from Turkish people now. From uh, uh, well, uh, well, we we will definitely. Yeah, you can uh, use. Uh... Isico, uh, I used before I implemented uh, endpoints for Isico. It's very easy to use. Also, I think Stripe, uh, what you mentioned, it uh, not, not doesn't work in. Turkey. Yeah, Stripe also doesn't work here. You and pay you probably in working in Turkey. Okay. But the best one is Isico. Uh, but rates is little high. But if you negotiate with them with uh, your financials. They will uh, give uh, you some options. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you too for a great presentation. Uh, you're the family business, right? But see, you need to pay some, even uh, yourself. If you're a foreigner, what about this uh, rule in Turkey that you need to hire three Turkish people? Um, yes, you have to hire five Turkish citizens uh, to hire one uh, foreigner. Um, but also in some, they, okay, they say that uh, in some uh, techno parks now uh, there is uh, like uh, exclusion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or in this rule. So they are trying, you know, to liberate this law. So just stay tuned and uh, follow the legislation. It probably will be a bit easier. Let's hope. Yeah, let's pray together, guys. <laughs> so thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. There are 50 people there. I will check. <laughs>